from him. That does That's nothing. That's true. All right. So, today Mr. Hall is going to talk with you for a little bit. We're going to work through a couple of things. A couple is in two or a couple is in like a lot? Uh, we'll see how far we get. Oh, no. Alright, you all know that Mr. Hall loves you, right? Yes. Good. Mr. Hall loves you. Yes. So, sometimes we tell people we love the truth, even though we know it's going to hurt them, because that's what we have is trust, love. So, Mr. Hall is going to give you some truth right now. You all suck at lab techniques. I mean, suck. Now, we got that out there. I would have got burnt with lab techniques. But I wasn't here, Mr. Hall, so you can't include all. You would have just forgot here. the emergency shower. I would have just needed a fire hose. I just stood up on my desk. And <laughs> yeah, that first little oh, yeah, stunt John pulled would have killed everybody. I don't think we'll make it today, but we are this week. So, I want you all to know, it's okay. A lot of people would have never let you have touched half of the stuff back there I let you touch at this level. But that's okay. I want you to get exposed to it. I want you to get used to it. Now, we got to work on it. Okay? Because pipette, how many of y'all just love pipette, right? It's a blast. It felt really expensive. I didn't like it. <laughs> Guess what? You have a lab that is coming up. It's actually one, weirdly one of my favorite labs. Uh, you all get a vote on soft drinks, and we're going to figure out which soft drinks on the market have the most sugar in them and which ones are bad for you. Um, that you should not be drinking. Uh, which ones are the worst? Let's say it that way. So, I, I like the lab because it kind of lets the classes get a feel for it. It's not me going out and buying them and saying, here you go. You actually get to do it yourself. We actually did, I'll even do like an energy drink. I'll throw an energy drink in there. One year we did Monster. Let's do a cotton candy bang. So, it has to be a soft drink. Bang, bang, and you said bang. I heard cotton candy in my brain. That's the name of it. Sorry, sorry. Mr. Hall is fat. He's trying not to be fat. And it's like yesterday at Steak and Study, Nick Green brings his grandma's dirt cake. And I'm like, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I stayed strong and I said no and I ate no dirt cake. Mr. Hall. Yeah. I'll bind you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Holly. Strong. What, what's, what, what's that mysterious yellow liquid? <laughs> That's what I mean. That's a you know the, mixture you know of water, vinegar, right and some of my orange dish soap back there. It, for whatever reason, Matt's loving to catch them. That's okay. the same thing. Okay, right. so please do not feel like I'm being mean to you, but you all suck. Like, I love watching some of y'all get measurements and... I told you to measure from what on the meniscus? The bottom. The bottom, the bottom of the meniscus. So if you measured at the top, and then the really bad one is, is you measured at the top to start, and then you measured at the bottom to finish. And I'm like, man, there's such all jacked up. There's so much error here. So please, don't feel overwhelmed. It's all good. I will look at you and tell you, you can see all that stuff we used in the lab, sitting back on the last station. I actually recorded a video of me going through all the material that took about 11, it's about 11 minutes long, give or take. Uh, but I will be uploading that so that you have that to study with for what a beaker is, what's an all minor flask, what's a burette, because once you learn it, all is fair game. Don't forget it. That's right. So today, we're going to talk about the lab for a little bit. So we, we did this lab. This lab was all focused in on accuracy and precision. Now, I say it that way because accuracy and precision are actually two totally separate things. So many times we throw them all together. Everybody wants to put them all together and mix it all up. Man, there's a lot of people quarantined out of here. Whew. 
So it's mixed all together in a pretty bow, but it never should be. So to discuss this idea, let's say we have some targets. Here's some bullseyes right there in the middle. And let's say, for example, that we go out and I decide that I'm going to shoot a target. So I shoot at a target, and let's say I hit here, here, and here. I know what you're thinking. Man, Mr. Hall, you're the man. You're very accurate. Actually, no. Accuracy is something totally different. But what would you say here? I hit the bullseye every time, right? I'm very precise. I'm spot on. Now, precision's all about hitting the mark. Accuracy is different. Let's say I'm aiming for the bullseye. And I hit here. I hit here. And I hit there. Well, you're consistent, huh? I'm consistent, which is accuracy. That's what accuracy is. I have anybody in here that shoots shoots archery. Okay, that's fine. So, question: If I was shooting and this happened, is this a bad thing? No. What do I need to do? Probably side him again. Adjust, move my sights. That's all I got to do. But this is beautiful. And if I watched anybody shoot like this from 40 yards, I'm like, man, that guy's good. He's really good. Because look how tight of a pattern that is. Accuracy is all about repeating the same result. So it doesn't matter if it's on the bullseye. This is accurate. We have precision. This is accuracy. Got it? Yes. It's different. So the question I have for you is back in the lab. Which equipment was most precise? The pipette. The pipette. There's a very good indicator to let you know the pipette is the most precise. What is it? Not because it's small. Oh. Same measurement. There's not more than one measurement. It will only measure one volume. And that's all it's used for. It is extremely precise. Now, number two and three, some kids get it mixed up. And this just, just to be honest with you, comes back from your guys' inability and lack of experience when dealing with this equipment. What was number two? The, uh, what's it called? Burrett. That's very nice. That's pretty So the burrett was the second most precise. And this is the thing, the burrett is very, very useful for multiple measurements. Whenever we're doing something and we need a, a certain amount, and we absolutely need certainty, and the amount of volume of something that's going into a solution, but we do not know if it's going to fall exactly on a number, we use a burette. You will see the burette come back to you in a couple labs that we do titrations. Titrations will be the long, most tedious lab but you will be so thankful when you get to college that Mr. Hogg made you do the titrations. What? it? Number three? Graduated cylinder. Graduated cylinder. Now, we'll go out from here and go on to tell you. Number four and five, they tie. So fourth place? Beaker. Beaker. Let's go. And Erlenmeyer flask. The key with the ones in four are they are never in 
It, number four, we never use them to measure out a certain volume. What you'll see, and I can talk about it in the videos, those two are used for solutions. Like we can put solutions in there, uh, and that's pretty much what they're for, holding solutions. Now, the really cool thing with their Elmire flask, you see how it's big at the bottom and it comes to a nozzle? Is if I need to mix it together, I can grab it right at the nozzle and just shake it around. And if I can swirl it, it's not going to come out. Now, the bigger you do that, it can shoot up because the walls are the same way, so it'll beep and come out. Not with or my flask. Won't happen. So these are what we're seeing with the most precise. What you'll see, accuracy should fall right in there with it as well. So the pipe bit should be the most accurate. The burette should be right behind it, graduated cylinder right behind that, and the beaker and flask there at the end. So it's most precise and most accurate. But the big thing we worry about is really slamming and hitting that in. Hey, there it is. So, with your lab, a lot of you guys had, had questions about how to do this calculation. So today I want to take a moment and talk about something very important. So working through this lab for a second. I love y'all, and I think you guys get a little scared of me a lot of times. Because let's just be real, you guys are new. You've heard how horrible and awful and hard this class is and smacks you in the face like a 2 by 4 And you ain't been smacked in the face with a 2 by 4 yet. So you kind of get like overwhelmed, get nervous. That's what I hope it is. But I want to talk about something. Because i got to make sure you understand how to do these. If I'm trying to find the mass of water, well, let's just do it like this. So let's say the first step. Trying to find the mass of water, trying to figure out if the beaker is accurate. Or not. Well, y'all give me a piece of glass for you. I don't care. We, I think we did it on our flat scroll here. Beaker. Beaker, perfect. So let's say, trying to find how accurate, precise the beaker is. And we're getting blown up. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to choose a beaker. And the first thing I want to do, mass of beaker. I think somebody said that. Why am I getting the mass of the beaker? Thank you! Yes! That's why we need the mass of the beaker. So later... We can subtract to find mass of water. So is it kind of like when you're trying to measure the weight of your dog and you're like, well, how much do I weigh? And then you pick up your dog and weigh yourself right here. Exactly. It's the same process. Cool. I've never thought of that. <laughs> Um, I will use that throughout the rest of my career. <laughs> You're welcome. You, anytime you ever hear that, you can be like, yeah, I'm the one that gave him the idea. I'll be sure to do that when I come here and visit like five years later. Yes. If, I, if that ever happens. Number two. Choose a volume of water. Why are we choosing a volume of water? So you can see how accurate. Yes. But it's like how all my AP biology students have found out. Give me some more details. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I actually did good. I got 80%. I'm perfect. <laughs> I was pumped. I still have as good as I started twice in that Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What's the density of water? One gram per milliliter. So that means yeah, I knew that. for every milliliter, it's just a gram. They're interchangeable. So the reason we choose a volume of water is that volume of water I 
That looks awful. Is equal to mass of water. Now, for those of you that are like, yeah, but what's the units? We use milliliter for volume, grams for mass. They're equal. So I've chose the volume of water. I need a calculator. It's always dangerous when a science teacher tries to build a problem in their head in the middle of class and it, uh, it typically don't end well. Just to let you know. So you choose that volume of water, volume of water is equal to the mass of the water. This is helpful for us because of three. Get mass of beaker and water. Why do we have to get the mass of the beaker and the water? So we can find out how much the water I find out the mass of the water. We're going to do that by subtracting mass of beaker from this left with mass of water. Instead of coming back to visit, I think a better idea would just be to stock your YouTube channel from now on. So like, I can just, <laughs> like, just anonymously comment and be like, hey, I was the one who told them to tell you that. I was actually uh, looking. I need to go in there and clean it up. I need to delete all the videos. I definitely need to delete my old videos. It's like they're so bad. Okay. So, let's say, for example, and this is where I need you all to get. I need you all to be to where I can give you the word problem, you understand what has happened, you pull the information from it, and apply your knowledge. Because I'm not worried about, you know, which units do you would? Or... You're supposed to say it. One gram, one milliliter. One gram per milliliter. I ain't worried about you knowing that. Because the truth of it is, if I have you have to apply that property in a problem, then I find out whether you know it or not. The best part is, I'm going to find out if you know how to do some real deal stuff. We are not going to baby you in this class, ladies and gentlemen. We're not making snowflakes. <laughs> Maybe later. So, let's say, for example, Mr. Hall goes back to the lab. He grabs a beaker and finds the mass of the beaker to be 29.5 grams. 29.5 what'd you say? 5 grams. I said 21. 29.21 grams. Why not? <laughs> you said, oh, never mind. I just had a completely random thought. Go on. Choose me a volume of water. Please make it something like that. 13.789 milliliters. That's like a, <laughs> like a simple number. 50. 50. Thank you. My number looks better. <laughs> 50 milliliters. What's the mass of 50 milliliters of water? 50 grams. So 50 milliliters of water is equal to 50 grams. Four or five decagrams. What's the 29.21? Yeah, Mass of beaker. Mass of beaker. Okay. So is this like an example problem? Yes. Okay. My hope is as I'm working through this and I'm creating this problem in the back of my head, then what will happen is you all will watch the video, it's going to work out, and you're going to go, oh, I get it. So if he asks it on a quiz, I'm going to like destroy his problem and say in your face, Mr. Hall. Then I'm going to get it wrong anyway. It's kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so then let's 
let's say Mr. Hall fills it up to the 50 milliliter mark, so I'm supposed to have 50 grams of water in it. Now, I put it on the schedule. Mr. Hall gets 80.01 grams. Yes, you get that clear on the test. You went over by 0.8. Man, I can't get nothing by you, John. You can't, Mr. Paul. <laughs> You're talking to the two-time first place Bruiser my food that champion. I know I'm Woo! Man! Didn't know I had in this class. Yeah. What? What did he say? Hyphen. John, what did you say? Hey, hey, man. Hey, hey, hey. Two-time regional that field day champion. You already know. So, first place. 80.01 grams. This is Massa Beaker. And water. So if I want to get the mass of water, what am I going to do? Subtract. Subtract what? What's my first number? Well, you have to subtract 80.01 grams. Oh, there we go. Come on now. Yeah. Uh, grams because, you know, units matter, right? Yes. Minus what? 29.21 grams. Woo! 29.21 grams. Now, when I subtract these out, what does it sound like Mr. Price wanted? And I get 50.8 grams. What is that? The mass of? Water. 50.8 grams is the mass of water. So, we did all this to make sure you understand how you got the values back there you got. How you can find a mass of something is very important. And now comes the one question you all had on the front of your lab handout. I had something there at the very bottom. Percent error. Percent error is very important. Whenever I was in college and I took the class called analytical chemistry, percent error was huge. In that class, for every percentage, you were off. So for every percent error, it was a subtraction from your grade. So if you had a percent error of 20, it was minus 20. And i got to say something. I now know why Dr. Wong did it like that. Dr. Wong. I had a percent error. It was pretty high one time. And let's just say, I felt that thing bite me right in the butt. I never again had a high percent error. And I worked really hard to make sure I came up with a zero percent error. So percent error. Whenever you look at it, the percent error of this trial. I have to find out two pieces of information. I have the approximate measurement and the actual measurement. From the information up here on this board, what is the approximate measurement? 50 grams. 50 grams. 50 was the right spot. Beautiful job. I'm so pleased with you all right now. This, preferably this, is the approximate. Why is that the approximate? That's what we're aiming for. That's what Theoretically, we should have. What is the actual measurement? 50.8. The 50.8 gram. This is my actual measurement. So, find it, see, pop in. That's my actual measurement. So now you have the information you need to do the calculation. See? We oui, oui, yeah. No, it's French. It's all over the place. Okay, so approximate measurement. Now I did not put this on here. This should be an absolute value. Because I don't want you to end up with a negative percent error. I don't want you to have to worry about that. 
So center, absolute value. Approximate measurement is what? 50 grams. 50 grams. Minus actual? 50.8. My five looks like an S. Now, in the absolute value, then we're going to divide it by the actual measurement, which is? 50.8. 50.8. And then to get a percentage, don't you dare do this. Don't you ever speak these words in my room ever. Don't you ever cuss. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care. When you want to use Miss Cole's scoop method, you use that down in her room. We do math up here. No scoop method allowed. You tell Miss Cole I said that. She knows. We multiply by 100. We don't move that decimal two places. Why? Why? To get the percentage. I like this tool. That's kind of hard to like. Did it? Don't you say that. Uh, I don't care if you use it in this room. Don't tell me you're using this room. You know, aren't the uh, shells on the back of the tarot called scoops? <laughs> like I have no little, idea. <laughs> got little pieces of the shell that are called scoops. All right, so let's do 50 minus... Sure. My We get a percent error. And by we, I mean me, because remember I said me, Mr. Hallwick Maker, of 1.5748%. Now, did my calculator go four places? No, but I want you to stop at four places. Why? Because I feel like it just helps with the accuracy and precision in our calculation. So, what is the percent error of this trial that Mr. Hall did? 1.5748. Percent? How do you guys feel? Okay. Pretty simple enough, right? So far, so good. So far, so good. Now, I'm not going to throw like something really stupid hard at you. I will be honest with you. I have some practice problems. I will end up giving you this week for you to work on this. And I will work a video for you to have with that as well. But here's the thing. I want to make sure you guys know where all this information is coming from. You have to be able to take the problem and do all this thinking and pulling and calculating yourself. It's weird since Mr. Stewart's class came in here because I'm scanning the room and I'm looking at people. And it's like I look at them and I'm like, do they have any idea what's happening? And it's a no. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. Yeah. I feel like I missed so much. Oh, I'm in here because I did a live thing. Record video. Are you a poster? Yes. Okay. Thanks. What's your channel? Okay, thanks. Okay. I sent it on Reminder. You want to remind? It's on Remind. Yeah, I'm on Remind. Yeah, I'll send the link out to that. I can say it. Yeah, I like it. I haven't seen it yet. I got a good old message. Yeah, yeah I'm 30. I told you <laughs> on days of lab and of quizzes, you best have do not disturb on if you don't want me waking you up. Well, it's a good thing you did because I forgot. <laughs> See? I, I was up okay. before you. I got on the bus at 6. So I don't know. All right, guys. That's why I sent it so early. Hey, y'all. Now. If you miss the lab, don't worry. You'll have plenty of time to work with pipettes later. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going away. Now, let's have a conversation to make sure everybody's on the same page. What do you have coming up Friday? Quiz. Quiz. So, it's very important that you're studying and working. Have a gift. I'm full. I've got <laughs> I'm full of gifts. Is it a this is the first oh, one of many to come. It's a theme. Extra credit. <laughs> you got real joke. If I call her in, do I get extra credit? No. You and I are going to have to know all of these, okay? I'm not even worried about you knowing them. I'm just giving you the periodic table for some helpful information. Yeah, I'm going to give John a new one on this one too.
Here we go, sir. Very important. You get familiar with this. Of just like the outline right now. That's what I'm worried about. I'm not so worried if you know all 118. So I'm going to be honest with you. I'm your chemistry teacher. I don't know all 118. <gasps> what? You're not qualified to teach me chemistry. <laughs> Who cares if I know what 114 is? You ain't ever going to do nothing with it. Uh, it's Uniquanium. It's actually, actually all 118 has changed, and they actually have real names now. Huh? You, you, you. Okay, the ones that are down there like that, those are synthesized and they're made in labs. And whoever makes them get to name them. And you have to be able to prove that it existed. And it's like a really complex thing. They literally take like two atoms and they're literally slamming them into each other until there comes a point to where the two fuse together. And it's like, hey, new element gone. It happens that fast. It's that unstable. Wow. So. What's the purpose? It's a black hole. Ladies and gentlemen, today we'll get into some real chemistry. So if I recall, we talked about the three subatomic particles, yes? Yes. yes. What was the first one? Protons. Protons. Tell me about the proton. Don't look at the definition. Give me your own. It's positive. Positive. It's a charge. Positive charge. Positive charge inside the nucleus. Beautiful job. Positive. Positive. Positively charged subatomic particle located in the nucleus of an atom. An atom. Yeah. So where does the positive charges from the atom come from? Protons. 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 What is the second subatomic particle? Neutrons. A neutron. Tell me about the neutrons. There's a negative, negative charge in the atom. Yeah, in the atom. They are neutral. 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 Oh wait. Well, yeah. yeah. Subatomic particles found where? In the, in the atom. In the nucleus. nucleus. They were the same mass. Sorry. They had the same mass. Yeah, in a way. Number three. Electron. Electron. The electron. Negative. Tell me about the electron. Negative. Negatively charged subatomic particle found in the electron cloud. In the electron cloud. It's on the outside of the atom. Yeah. Okay? Not in the nucleus. That's what's up. This would be a problem. If the electron was in the nucleus, that means the atom has collided and collapsed within itself and we got major problems. Uh oh. That would happen. What <laughs> happened if that would happen to a human? Nothing would happen. Oh. It would not exist. Oh. It's like boom, gone. That's what I meant. I mean talk to me to the camera. Just turn in the So here's the thing. We're gonna focus in on these. The electron we're gonna focus in a lot more later on. Right now, we're going to focus in more on these protons and neutrons. So we talked about, correct me if I'm wrong, we had started off with building the box and breaking down what all was in, listed on the periodic table, correct? Yeah. Yes. Did I get to the last bottom number? I don't think that was here. Last when did we do this? Oh, you, yes, please. Say it again. The math. Math. Mass number. Average math. Yes, we did. We started on. We started on doing the bell ring. I know. That right there. You got me caught up. Y'all help me. Boom, y'all. We're ready to play the song. Average math. Here's the thing. Average math is very special. So you have to take a lot of things into account whenever you're dealing with atoms. So atoms, they're not people. All right? Whenever you look at people, we're all people, right? So we're all atoms. Outside of that, Mark Zuckerberg might not be. Oh, dear. Outside of that, we come in different shapes, different sizes, look different, sound different. Atoms can be different, but they can still be people. What I'm talking about is where this average mass comes from. You have... I need this. It has my periodic table app on it. Yes, I am a nerd. Yes, I have a periodic table app. These kids these days. 
content with their technology. And their, uh, back in my day, we had paper copies. A teacher did. <laughs> yeah, back in my day, we had to walk to school backwards in snow. Uphill <laughs> both ways. All right. The average mass. Oh, must have been missing me that day. Takes percent abundance and isotopes into account to calculate and Average oh, purple. atomic mass. <laughs> this is the thing with what you see on the periodic table, and this is why I just gave it to you. First off, I gave it to you for this. Second thing is tomorrow. We'll be needing it for other things. You can find on there the average atomic mass. Now, I'm going to answer a question for you right ahead. Somebody do me a favor and look at number 12. It's magnesium. What is the average atomic mass for magnesium? 24.31. Pretty reasonable, right? Now, you get different numbers for different ones. Like everybody go to 118. What's the average stomach mass from 118? If I could have everyone's attention, please, for some evening announcements. I want to remind everyone that tomorrow is Westside College Fair. 